Welcome back to another FPL Best Wildcard Team, the updated version for Double Gaming 35. Many of you watching will be using the chip, and even if you aren't, this could help you with your transfer plans for the last few game weeks of the season to identify the teams to load up on and the players to buy in your FPL squads. Smash the like button and subscribe for new. Our aim is to get this video to the 200 likes and let's keep on pushing towards 25,000 subscribers and beyond. Be sure to also check out all the other links in the description below for the Patreon, Champions Discord server, the FPL League, FPL Challenge, Draft Hound, also Spotify and Amazon Music, and of course my Twitter and Instagram, DylanRCM. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. I highlighted Edison in yesterday's team selection video and podcast before the Brighton Hove Albion game and Edison got a clean sheet, made three saves and got seven points overall and to cover that Man City defence I believe is the best way to do that because there is no risk of rotation here unless Man City win the league quite early and then Ortega gets a game but if Man City are pushed until the very end I think Edison starts every single match and I can't say the same thing about Ruben Diaz who is benched against Brighton over Albion even Kyle Walker who got two assists and 14 points Gavardio has been a very good FPL option recently I wouldn't be able to count on him starting every single game so that's why I'm going for Edison you could even double up on the citizens defense with a walker or gavardio alongside an edison but i definitely wouldn't go for two man c defenders there's no doubt about that one is certainly enough because of all the rotation and the minutes risk that you have with every Manchester City defender. Now, for the second goalkeeper, it's quite a difficult one. You've got the likes of David Raya. If you don't have the bench piece for Gemic 37, I still like Raya. I know the two away games are very tough against Man United and Tottenham, but he can keep clean sheets in the home matches against Bournemouth and also against Everton to wrap up the season. And Arsenal have kept clean sheets in some of the most difficult circumstances. They did it at the Etihad, which is something no other team has done for a period of 77 plus games so it's a ridiculous record Man City have at the Etihad and Arsenal was still able to get a nil-nil draw there so he is definitely someone to monitor the carrier for the double game week in 35 and 37 you've also got Petrovic but Robert Sanchez is always knocking on the door it seems I would recommend Dubravka but Nick Pope could be back by the end of the season potentially in time for double game week 37 if we got confirmation of Pope being ruled out of 37 now then I think he could be a great option for your wild cards and also just for everyone until the end of the season he's also quite useful on the bench boost especially in terms of budget but I'm going for another expensive goalkeeper so to speak and I'm going for Anana so that's two Manchester clubs and their goalkeepers and of course United themselves have a pretty poor defence but Anana is the best way to cover it Diogo Dalla would be second if I'm ranking the Manchester United assets in terms of their defensive numbers so that's what I'm going for Edison and Anana but definitely consider Pet Petrovic, Vicario and David Rye is still a great option despite the lack of doubles and some tough fixtures, particularly away from home. Let me know if you disagree with any of the positions and your thoughts on all of these selections, but let's now move on to the defenders. Even if you're bench boosting in Gemic Phase 7 like myself, I'd still recommend at least one Arsenal asset, preferably to cover their defence. You could even double up with Raya in goal or go for one of Saliba or Gabriel alongside Ben White. But funds are obviously a big part. If you can't afford White, just go to Gabriel. I don't think there's going to be a massive difference as we saw in Double Gaming 34. But White definitely has the best attacking threat right now. He scored a brace against Chelsea, but more likely he's going to get assists and bonus points along the way. He's had an incredible season for Arsenal, especially since that trip to Dubai in January. He has been just a new player. He's been playing for injury even up until this point, but I think that rested him the world of good and he's found that momentum and he's been a very consistent performer for Arsenal over the last couple of seasons. Now, the second defender I'm going for is Malagusto, but we'll probably get an update by Pochettino in the press conference today. So this video and podcast is recorded on Friday morning and we should get some confirmation about Malagusto's injury by midday in the United Kingdom. So let's wait and see what happens but with Malagusto if he is ruled out you can go for a Van Heck to replace him as a double gimmick 37 defender who's very cheap and that could be the best way to do it but that's not really my preference and I'd still cover Chelsea defensively one way or another so if Gusto is ruled out you might want to go for Petrovic in goal possibly for Anana and you bring Dallo in for Gusto but that all depends on the injury updates we get and the same goes for other flag players and some very key assets in the forward line and the midfield now the third defender I'm going for is Fabian Scher but 
If funds are an issue, you can just go for Dan Byrne, as I mentioned in my team selection video and podcast. I'm kind of torn between those two. Share is my obvious preference, but there is a 1.1 million difference in price, and you've also got other positions to think about. But Fabian Share is currently in my team, and the same goes for the Tottenham defender with the amazing pronunciation of Pedro Borro, and I think with the attacking potential, the bonus points, and the assist that he can provide you consistently, he is the best way to cover that Tottenham defence. Vicario would be second, and Romero would be third. Remember, a doggy is ruled out for the rest of the season. He had surgery just around a week ago, and that means he's not going to play another minute of this Premier League season. Even if a doggy was available, Borro has always been my preference ever since game week 10, really, and I would go in that direction. Now, Spurs aren't reliable defensively, but as I mentioned, you get the likes of Pedro Borro for the attacking potential, and the same applies to Malo Gusto. Now, there's one defender slot left, and you can go for a second Arsenal defender if you wish. You can go for Diogo Dallo. There's a few ways you can tackle this. But my gut feeling is to double up on that Arsenal defence. So you go for one of Saliba or Gabriel for this fifth defender slot. Or what you can do is go for Raya instead of Anana, and that will free up that United slot. And of course, you can go for Dallo and Anana at the same time, but I'm still not a big fan of that, to be quite frank of you. So I'm going for Dallo, and Raya will be there to cover the Arsenal defence. If you're not really too interested and you want to fill up your squad full of doublers and you don't want any Arsenal players whatsoever, then that's fair enough. You can go for a Walker or Gavardio instead of Ben White. You can possibly go for Van Heck as well, and you can double up on Man United defensively with Anana as well as Dallo, or maybe you go for Vicario or Petrovic. It's completely up to you how you want to play it. It's very easy to build a full 50-man squad full of doublers for Gemic 37 and to have also an optimized team for double Gemic 35 with five or six Chelsea and Tottenham players. But I'd probably go for something like this. I do think Anana is a better way of covering that Man United defense compared to Dallo. But you also have to take into account the budget. And for example, if I go for Gabriel or Saliba instead of Dallo and then go for none instead of Raya, that will make this team even more difficult to afford and more expensive in the process. And in a lot of these cases, I'm going to show you with some different wildcard drafts and alternatives, we are pushing the budget limits in some of these examples, even if you don't go for Erling Haaland up front. But let me know what you think about this defensive line. Of course, there are some 50-50 calls. Do you go for maybe White? Saliba Gabriel? Do you go for two of them? Do you go for Raya or Anana? Possibly do you go for Vicario or Borro? There are so many different ways of tackling this, but ultimately, a lot of us will load up on the same teams and go for the same players, but these 50-50 calls can be crucial. I was hoping for Foden to be quiet against Brighton. I didn't get my wish. He scored a brace, the first of which was a very contentious goal, but he scored nonetheless, and as soon as I sold Foden and I kept Palmer, I immediately regretted that because I've been backing Foden against Brighton all week long. And once I sold Haaland to Mateta, that made the Foden transfer possible where I keep him and sell Palmer instead. So that turned out to be a wrong call. And if I had kept Foden, I would be in a very healthy position right now. And Gimmick 34 would have been a great one, but it is what it is. And Phil Foden is a must have for the rest of the season. I believe he'll start every single game until Man City secure the title or they narrowly miss out, which is a very unlikely possibility at the moment. But Phil Foden for me is by far the best Man City asset, period, even over Kevin De Bruyne. But you can go for both of them at the same time. And guess what? It's been a long while, but for the first time in many months, I'm including De Bruyne in a wildcard team. I'm not saying he's essential. You don't have to go for him and he's still a bit of a minutes risk. But if you want that explosive differential, I think De Bruyne can certainly be that for you. And if Haaland is still out for the weekend and he's a doubt for Gemic 36, then it might be best to go for two City attackers like an Alvarez up front or you go for Kevin De Bruyne to partner Phil Foden. The one non-negotiable for me is Foden. And then it's up to you if you go for Haaland up front or Alvarez or De Bruyne himself, maybe even a double up in the Man City defence, which I'm less keen on because Man City in general haven't kept that many clean sheets over the last two seasons. Now, the third midfielder is Bruno Fernandes, and I think he's by far the best Man United asset, and I think the gap between him and second place is bigger than Foden and any other Man City asset, for example. Bruno has been in incredible form, seven goals in his last six games in the Premier League. He created nine chances against Coventry in the FA Cup semi-final and had five shots, and he also followed that up with another nine key passes against Sheffield United with a brace and also an assist. So Bruno Fernandes is carrying Man United right now, and with some of those fixtures, the Dublin Gimmick 37, I think he's almost a must-have 
have and one of the best ways for wildcarders to differentiate themselves from non-wildcarders and gain rank very quickly. Now the two other midfielders are quite simple. I'm going to go for one of the best assets in this season and he's currently second in terms of FPL points only behind Ollie Watkins and that's going to be Cole Palmer who is currently an injury doubt. Let's see if he's fit for Gemic 35 and maybe Pochettino will give us an update but based on his comments after the Arsenal game it does kind of indicate an injury rather than an illness so hopefully he is back very soon but if he were to miss out the gimmick 35 or the first game at least that could open up the FPL landscape and also maybe have more differentials and more variety in the game which is a good thing but we're all hoping that he's fit very soon and he is obviously competing for the golden boot as well now the final midfielder slot is Ming Son and he's definitely the best Spurs asset for me there's no question about it you can double up with Brennan Johnson, Richarlison or Madison and it's worth mentioning that every Spurs asset, all the main ones anyway like Borro and Richarlison were in training so Spurs have massive boosts ahead of the North London derby but I think one Spurs midfielder is enough and Son of course is undoubtedly the very best one you want to go for. Now one midfielder that I have left out that I really like is Anthony Gordon but you can cover the Newcastle attack in another way you don't necessarily need to triple up on Newcastle or double up on their attack and this midfield five looks very strong but of course I'll show you another draft later on which doesn't have De Bruyne and has a bit more of a traditional wildcard feel to it and it'll be similar to what you've seen in my previous wildcard squad but let's now complete this team with the three forwards. We might be in for a whole world of pain with Nicholas Jackson and he's definitely not someone you have to pick on the wild card. If you have the funds, Ollie Watkins is definitely worth the extra two million, but it's about finding those extra millions and with this squad, for example, you probably downgrade De Bruyne to Gordon to make that upgrade possible from Jackson to Watkins and maybe even to Erling Haaland himself, who doesn't feature in this particular wildcard team and it's all dependent on his fitness. Maybe you go about him on the wildcard in 35 and bring him back by Gemic 37. That is one possibility, but ideally, you don't want to book in transfers because you also have to think about Gemic 38 and going for Liverpool and Arsenal players for that final game of the season at home where the pressure could be off potentially by that stage or we have a crown champion Nicholas Jackson for me is an ideal and if I'm ranking the Chelsea assets he's probably second or third and if Gustav and Palmer are cleared they're ready to play I think Jackson does fall down to third you've also got Petrovic as well those are the only four Chelsea assets I'd consider I'm not really interested in Mudrick Sterling or anyone else like Conor Gallagher I think those are the four you kind of pick from you don't need a triple up in Chelsea two is already enough but those two doubles in 35 and 37 is the main reason why I've gone for Gusto, Palmer and Jackson. Now there are two forward slots left and this is where things get very interesting indeed but I am going for quite a similar outlook to the last wildcard squad so Isak also makes it but it's worth mentioning that Callum Wilson is back in training. There could be some rotation later down the line particularly in double gimmick 37 but Isak's form is too good to ignore. He blanked against Crystal Palace, but he's one of the most informed forwards in the Premier League. He's been scoring in most games. He's on penalties, great underlying numbers, and the fixtures are fantastic. The only doubts I have about him are one, the fitness, because he has a poor injury record at Newcastle, and two, Callum Wilson and the rotation that could bring about. Now, the final forward I'm going for hasn't been in great form, but he finally scored in Gemic 34 for the first time since his return from injury, and that's Rasmus Hoyland. He also got a bonus point to boot, and I'd rather double up on the Man United attack, although they've been very poor recently as well. Bruno Fernandes is the one you definitely want to cover the Red Devils, and then Hoyland would be the kind of secondary pick that could be a great differential for you. Now, this front three looks very balanced, very solid solid. There is no Erling Haaland, of course, and that allows you to spread the funds to buy a Kevin De Bruyne, for example. You could even buy Trent at the back if you wish, just for the attacking potential. But I do like the balance of this 15-man squad. I will show you some differences very soon. But before I do, let's show you Draft Town and what they're recommending now for the best wildcard team. And I have to say, the changes they've made are very solid and it looks much better than what I showed you previously. Check out the link in the description below for Draft Town. I'd highly recommend it. Many of you are signing up using my link and talking about how useful this website is. One very underrated feature is the fact they update the points regularly. So the best wildcard team from a few days ago is now completely different and they've removed some of the weak links that I talked about in the last wildcard team video and podcast. So they recommend Petrovic in goal with Anana. They've got Pedro Porro, Van de Ven and Fabian Scher as part of the back three. 
Palmer, Son, Foden, Bruno Fernandes and the Bruyne, which is the same midfield five I've showed you here today with Jackson, Isak and Hoyland up front. The same front three as well. Where we differ is in the goalkeepers and the defensive line. I don't agree with Van de Ven and Borro. I think one is already enough and you go for the Spaniard. But apart from that, I can't really find too much to really nitpick with this wildcard draft. Maybe Branthwaite, who has been in great form, of course. He scored against Liverpool. He got a 20-pointer in double gimmick 34 and that's back-to-back -back clean sheets for Everton but you'd probably want to go for Van Heck instead or maybe Maguire to cover that Man United defense if you want a cheap way to do that of course Anana's already in there I don't like that defensive double up but with the double that United have in Gemic 37 that could be another way you tackle that and fill your team full of doublers for the bench boost in 37 but that is a really good team I have to say that it's very strong. They recommend Palmer as the captain and Son as the vice. But if we get a negative update about Palmer, then the points will change. And I think Son will become the best captain according to Drafthound and all these algorithms. On the right-hand side, you can see one of my wildcard drafts that I talked about in the team selection. Let me know if you like that team as well. The expected points for that is 85 Point six, but the wildcard team they suggest the expected points is 90.2 so it could be worth following a few more of those picks there as well but let's now move on to fpo.team and show you the starting 11 and the captaincy for the best wildcard team i've discussed throughout most of this video and podcast between the sticks i go for edison away to nottingham forest with gusto pedro Borro and share completing the defensive line, two double gimmick defenders there, and share at home to Sheft United. A midfield five of Foden, De Bruyne, Son, Bruno Fernandes, and Palmer. You've got two double gimmick players there, of course, De Bruyne and Foden with a good fixture away from home, and Bruno Fernandes hosting Burnley. So that looks pretty good too. And the front two includes Jackson with a double game week and Isak, the bench comprised of Raya, Hoyland, Dallow, and Ben White. You could argue that one of the Arsenal players could start, but the North London derby is very tough. You saw what Everton did to Liverpool just a few days ago, and Tottenham are a better team than Everton. So if they're up for it, they can cause Arsenal some real problems, and that's why I've currently got them on the bench. But I do like the Arsenal players in Gimmick 36 and 38 at home to Bournemouth and Everton. And you could even argue against Man United away, but I still think that's going to be tough for the Gunners. And I've got 0 0.8 million left in the bank, so you can make some upgrades in some cases. If you aren't able to afford this team, then you can look at some differences and ways of making that happen. So Gabriel instead of White would be a very clear example. You could also go for Joao Pedro in the forward line, although I'm not really too keen on him right now. Instead of De Bruyne, you can go for Saka or maybe go for a second Spurs midfielder. You also have Anthony Gordon as well, and that will give you even more funds to upgrade Jackson to Ollie Watkins. So if I actually show you a few changes we can make to this wildcard team, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Watkins coming in, also Anthony Gordon for De Bruyne and Jackson. And you can go for Kyle Walker in the back line instead of Diogo Dallo and Anana as your second goalkeeper. But none of this is set in stone. It's kind of the foundations. You go for two or three players from certain teams. It's just finding that right combination, what kind of suits you and your managerial style. And some explosive differentials like De Bruyne can really help you out. If you don't have the bench piece for Gimmick 37, I'd highly recommend just buying Watkins on the wild card. I think is a great option despite some tough fixtures on paper Watkins has done it week in week out this season and is for me one of the best players this season in the Premier League he should be a contender for the player of the season award so that is another difference let me know if you prefer this team or the first one I talked about with Kevin De Bruyne and as you can see with this squad I've got 3.3 million left in the bank so everyone watching should be able to afford this and you can make some big upgrades depending on your preference maybe Sack or Odegaard in the midfield for an Anthony Gordon it's completely up to you but if you still want to go for Erling Haaland and not spread the funds as I've showed you with these first two drafts you can go for him and this is kind of a hybrid between my team selection and also the best wildcard team the original one from a couple of days ago so Edison and Anana as the two goalkeepers Gusto, Pedro Borro and Byrne as the back three with Foden, Son, Fernandez, Gordon, Palmer as the midfield five Jackson and Isak out front, Haaland, Dallow and Gabriel on the bench. Epidot team say that I'm 0 0.2 million over budget, but I'm actually able to afford this team. And if you aren't able to, for example, and you still want Erling Haaland, you could go for Maguire instead of Dallow as one particular example. And you can also make a few downgrades here and there, maybe Brennan Johnson or Madison instead of Bruno Fernandes as well. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Which one of these three drafts do you prefer? Will you still go for Erling Haaland up front? Do you like Kevin De Bruyne as a differential? 
I want to see all your thoughts about gimmick phase 5 because it'll be a very interesting one and for wild carders especially those with the bench boost in phase 7 this is going to be probably the most pivotal part of the season and it could be a make or break and you probably will gain rank regardless of how it goes but you just never know you have to get these decisions spot on on the wild card and that's why I've placed so much emphasis on the wild card throughout the entire week thank you very much for watching this video and listening to this podcast if you enjoyed it or found it useful, then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's get this video to over 200 likes and let's keep on pushing towards 25,000 subscribers and beyond. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Dylan RCM, and check all the other links in the description below for the Patreon, Championship Discord server, the FPL League, FPL Challenge, Draft Hound, as well as Spotify and Amazon Music. Leave a five-star review on those podcasts as well. I wish you all the best of luck for Double Gimmick 35 and the rest of the season, and I'll see you next time.